missed an episode of your favorite podcast, choose from over a decade of content in our archives. Not just the latest episode. All free at GCNlive.com. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we're here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us show you how simple and how easy it can be to get on a good nutritional supplement program. Wean yourself off your prescription drugs and get healthy for reals. Not symptomatically, not lowering your test scores, but get healthy for reals using a nutritional supplement program, using dietary strategies, using divinely mandated strategies, food, breathing, nutrition, taking it easy, lightening up, and of course, getting on a good nutritional supplement program like the one designed by Dr. Wallach. We can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number today on the bright side and every day on the bright side. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, head over to my website, brightsideben.com and take a look at our shopping cart. You can also go over to my blogs, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. And if you want to join the Brightside Ben team, start yourself a longevity business, make some money selling longevity products and spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can click on the join the team link at any of the websites, pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. All right, we'll take your calls in our second segment, 844-236-6010. We'll talk to Dr. James Ehrlich again about uh, bergamot and polyphenols and flavonoids. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about male sexual performance, ED, as they say, uh, skin health as well with Dr. Ehrlich. And that'll be at the bottom of the hour. We'll take your calls in our next segment. We're talking skin health here on the bright side. We've been talking about it now for a little bit, a couple of weeks anyway. And we'll continue talking about skin health in honor of my new truth treatment products, truthtreatments.com. But we're really talking about the whole body. Everything that's true about eliminating skin health issues permanently and forever is true about eliminating all degenerative health conditions. So if you don't have a skin problem per se, if you don't have eczema or acne or psoriasis or dry skin, et cetera, and I don't know anybody who doesn't have it, at least dry skin, but let's say you don't have a skin health issue that's not a concern of yours, but you have something else going on, please understand that it's all the same thing. All disease is cell disease, and it doesn't matter if it's showing up on the skin or showing up in the bones or showing up anywhere else. And in any case, skin issues, skin health challenges rarely occur unless there's some kind of biochemical breakdown inside the body. Some kind of health issue. Skin issues are health issues. Health issues are systemic. They're global. They're internal. They involve the whole body. The skin is not divorced from the body. It's part of the body. And appearances can be deceiving, 
Doesn't look like the skin is connected to the heart, but it is. The skin is connected to the stomach, but it is. It doesn't look like the skin is connected to the bone, but it is. It is all one system, and you can no more treat skin issues effectively, be they eczema or psoriasis or dry skin, you can no more treat these skin issues effectively without addressing the inside of the body than you can restore a dilapidated Victorian house by putting a coat of paint on it. Skin care is health care, and skin health issues are body health issues. Got eczema? Think foods, think fats, think vitamin A, think vitamin C, think zinc, think probiotics. You got psoriasis? Think sunshine. Think digestive system. Think food allergies. Got acne? Think zinc. Reduce sugar intake. Lower your insulin. Use probiotics. Make sure you're getting your vitamin A and other fatty vitamins. And a typical standard issue moisturizer, even if a movie star tells you how wonderful it is, even if Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston uses it, a standard issue moisturizer is not going to do squat for your dry skin, except for perhaps make you feel a little better temporarily. Xerosis or ichthyosis, which are the medical terms for dry skin, is an epidemic. Nearly all adults have it to one degree or another. And while it's seemingly a normal condition from a healthcare perspective, it is not normal. From a pers healthcare perspective, dry skin is not what should be occurring. It's a sign that something's wrong. Now, you don't want to beat yourself up about it. It's not like you want to judge yourself or anybody else. That's not the point. The point is, is that dry skin isn't going to kill you. It's not deadly, but it's a sign that something's wrong. And this is such an important idea. We may think that we're healthy and that our body's engines are firing on all cylinders, but if we have symptomology, by definition, our bodies are not performing. That's it. It's not a big deal. It simply means that if we want to address and eliminate our symptoms, we've got to recognize that there's something that needs to be tweaked in terms of our biochemistry. Symptoms are smoke. Breakdowns are fire. Where there's smoke, there is fire. Where there are symptoms, there are breakdowns. Where there's dry skin, there's a biochemical breakdown. Where there's pain, there's a biochemical issue. Where there is uh, uh, diabetes, where there's a digestive problem, where there is headaches, migraine headaches, whatever, there's something percolating in the biochemistry. Not a big deal. It's just that because we're deceived by appearances and we have a medical system and a healthcare system that is based on exploitation, we get taken advantage of. We get taken advantage of for not being able to see through appearances. The medical model, the health model, and unfortunately the alternative healthcare model sometimes as well exploits this kind of appearances are deceiving deception with symptomatic treatments, whether they be drugs or cosmetics or concealers or even nutrition. I call it this for that. Oh, you have this? Take that. That's your nutritionist or your dietitian or your alternative practitioner putting on his doctor hat. Oh, you got a thyroid problem? Take iodine. Oh, you have arthritis? Take magnesium. Oh, you have a cold? Take vitamin C. We have a tendency to go this, what do I take route, whether it's a drug from a doctor, a nutritional formula for an alternative practitioner, because we don't see beneath the appearances. And this is good news. Because once we understand this, then we can start to leverage the magnificent, unbelievable healing properties of the human body. And you guys, I have seen this over and over and over and over again. The successes that people have reversing their chronic degenerative diseases using internal biochemical nutritional strategies. Not this for that, but taking care of the digestive system, stabilizing the blood sugar system, deep breathing, relaxing, activating the parasympathetic nervous system to restore well-being and beauty and youthfulness and our God-given, God-given, divinely mandated birthright of health and wellness. There's no getting around it, folks. We got to address the underlying chemistry breakdowns that are always lurking behind the symptoms. And the good news, the great news, is once these are addressed, we're gonna feel better. We're gonna have the joie de vivre, the joy for life that we were born with. Whether or not our particular flavor of diseases are affecting our brain or our nerves or our muscles or our bones or our immune system. 
no matter where our, our particular flavor of breakdown is occurring, we will feel better once toxicity is removed, blood sugar is stabilized, digestive issues are corrected, and the appropriate nutrients are present. Your blood pressure is going to drop, you're going to lose weight, your heart health and brain health and immune health will all improve, and your skin will look better too. Your skin will look better on top of all of that. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got Dr. James Erla coming up at the bottom of the hour talking about the bergamot polyphenols and flavonoids. If you're interested in purchasing my Bergamax product, go to brightsidehealthproducts.com. Look for Bergamax, and we got some specials going on there as well. We'll talk some skin and some liver health and male sexual performance health as well with Dr. Ehrlich at the bottom of the hour. Our number today is 844-236-6010 if you've got questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs. From Science Daily, University of Michigan, uh, University of Michigan scientists, University of Michigan researchers now say cancer drugs may hold a key to treating brain disorders. This is what the medical model is about. We use cancer drugs among the most toxic and deadly of all prescription medicine to treat brain disorders. At least that's what this, uh, this study is proposing. A therapeutic approach for treating brain disorders using chemotherapeutic drugs. Again, from Science Daily, this one from the University of Minnesota Academic Health Center. Infant antibiotic use linked to adult diseases. Where have you heard this before? What do antibiotics do? They kill bacteria. What's in our intestine that makes vitamin D in the B complex and communicates to our intestinal and digestive cells to help build a robust and healthy digestive system? Good bacteria. Antibiotics kill bad bacteria and good bacteria, and it makes perfect sense that infant antibiotic use would be linked to adult diseases. More? Acetaminophen in pregnancy may lower testosterone in unborn boys. Yes, plain old Tylenol. You got a headache, mom? Take Tylenol, and you can guarantee that you're gonna have baby boys with lower testosterone. These are the kinds of strategies that are built into our culture that we just accept without even asking, without even questioning, without even looking at the obvious. A prescription drug is a poison, that's obvious. How can a poison make you better? How can a poison make you better? How is that even possible? Tell me, call me, 844-236-6010. What's the logic to taking a chemotherapeutic drug for a brain disorder? What's the logic to killing off good bacteria because you want to kill off bad bacteria? What's the logic to poisoning the immune system because you've got an immune condition? To poisoning the inflammation system because you've got inflammation? What is the logic to our pharmacomedical model? I can't figure it out. And I've been a pharmacist for 30 years. I've been studying drugs for 30 years. I can't figure out the logic. Anyway, I was talking to this lady yesterday, talking on the phone. Uh, to this gal, nice lady. She says she lost her taste, uh, lost her taste buds, lost uh, something wrong with her taste. She says she was poisoned. Happened 20 years ago. She still can't taste anything. Or 10 years ago, she still can't taste anything. And I, I've seen this lady. I saw her a couple weeks ago, and I told her, "Ma'am, you got bigger fish to fry than your taste buds." It's almost funny in a way. This gal is congested at night. She's got joint problems. Her body's breaking down globally, and she's worried about her taste buds. So I gave her my usual wrap, you know, you build the body, you take the, uh, the body will take care of itself, you put the nutrition in, you take the toxins out, what I think is common sense. You just take care of the body, the body will take care of the symptoms versus trying to eradicate the symptoms by compelling or forcing the body to do our pharmacomedical building or bidding, I should say. Anyway, I say, ma'am, work on the digestive system, strengthen the blood sugar system, relax the body. Somehow this is just not making sense to this poor gal. Nice lady. Just not making sense to her. She, but my taste buds. What can I do for my taste buds? Ma'am, I say, you can't do anything for your taste buds unless you address the bodily breakdown. Oh, but I'm doing all the right things, she tells me. Now she's getting frustrated. I'm doing everything right. I only eat raw vegetables, she says. Ma'am, it doesn't matter, I'm telling her. Something's going on. Continuing, I tell her, I don't know what it is you're doing. You got to figure that out for yourself. All I can tell you is your chemistry, that's your metabolism, is whacked. There's something wrong with the chemistry. Your body is not in building mode. It's in, it's in breakdown mode. It's in the red. It's catabolic. It's negative. And that only happens when the blood is toxic. When we say the body is toxic, what I really mean, the blood is toxic. And the only way the blood gets toxic is if something gets into it. 
that toxins it out, that poisons it. So ma'am, I don't know what you're doing, but I do know that we gotta build your body back up. As far as your taste buds go, they could easily come back once your inflammation goes down, once your congestion goes away. I'm talking to this lady, your body's breaking down, ma'am. Globally, you're just noticing it in parts. You're just focusing on the symptoms when we need to be focusing globally on the whole body. The parts will take care of themselves. Once toxicity, and that includes sugar, once toxicity and sugar are eliminated and you stabilize your blood sugar, you're eating more protein, you're eating more building foods, less inflammatory foods, which are processed foods, relaxing, lightening up, breathing, activating your parasympathetic nervous system, you're going to feel better. You're going to get stronger. Your sleep will improve. You'll be more resistant to colds. You're going to be more vibrant. And these are the conditions that will allow your taste buds to work again. Your entire body is breaking down, and that's what we need to be addressing. I'm talking to this, la this, this lady. Focus globally on the body as a whole. Use nutrition, dietary and digestive strategies. Stabilize your blood sugar. Eat coconut oil. Less refined carbohydrates. Deep breathe. Use psychological, mental, emotional strategies. These are all the things we can do ourselves. We don't need any doctors for this. We're pharmacists. You don't need me for this. I'm irrelevant. The medical model's irrelevant. These are all things we can do ourselves. Finally, she gets it. So, okay, she tells me. I think I understand. My body's breaking down. My taste buds are just a sign of the general bodily distress that's occurring, right? Hallelujah. You got it. And she says, great, I got one more question. What can I take for my carpal tunnel syndrome? I'm not kidding you. This is exactly what she said to me. And I just had to laugh because it's so difficult for us to understand this concept because the medical this for that model of health that is perpetuated by doctors and alternative practitioners and nutritionists and chiropractors, it t gives us this idea that we can take this formula or this supplement or this drug or have this procedure done and we'll be healthy again. Doctors are trained in disease. They're trained in how to alleviate disease, and that's it. If they have to do it by fudging or by creating numbers synthetically and by making up tests, so be it. They may not be able to reverse heart disease, but they can lower your cholesterol. They may not be able to make your thyroid work better, but they can lower your TSH. And it's not their fault. It's, we've abdicated our responsibility. We've given it away. We've given away our power to the medical model, and the medical model says, okay, we'll take responsibility. We'll take it for you. Give us your power, and we'll cut, take out your gallbladder, and you won't, your gallbladder won't hurt anymore. But we have no one to blame but ourselves. It's not the doctor's fault. Doctors are nice people. They mean well for the most part. And you know what, it's not even necessarily our fault, really, because we live in a society and a culture where we're imprinted this way. But once we understand what's happening here, we can start to take our power back on all levels. Spiritual levels, mental levels, emotional levels, and yes, physical levels. And it starts with building our body back up. You got a skin problem, you got an immune problem, you got a digestive problem, you got an inflammatory condition, correct digestive issues. Do a food diary, write down your foods. In fact, stop eating. Fast for a couple of days. Somebody asked me a couple of weeks ago if I could talk about how to do a fast. Well, how do you do a fast? You fast by not eating. How do you not eat? You not eat. You stop eating for a day. If you want to do some nutrients while you're fasting, that's not the end of the world, but it's not the end of the world to miss a day of nutrients either. If you absolutely positively have to have some kind of nutrition, do some lemon juice. Take a celery, a stalk of celery, put it in a Vitamix, put in a bunch of water, have some celery water. Celery water spun around, celery ground up in a, in a blender, in a Vitamix, spun around at high speed creates an electrical charge. You'll be drinking electrical energy and you'll get your nitrates and your phytonutrients from the celery as well. That's how easy health can be, you guys. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're coming back with Dr. James Ehrlich. 844-236-6010 is our number. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 uh, on our archive page at brightsideben.com. You can also purchase Longevity products off of brightsideben.com. And now you can purchase my Bergamax product off Brightside Health products.com brightsidehealthproducts.com and i am pleased to welcome our guest to the program dr james ehrlich we talked to dr ehrlich a couple of weeks back and your response was very positive and got a bunch of letters here asking uh, wanted me to ask dr ehrlich some questions so we'll do that here in just a moment greetings dr ehrlich good morning buddy morning ben how you doing 
Very welcome. good. Thank you. Wel- welcome back to town. I know you're a world traveler these days. <laughs> Lately, I have been, yes. What exactly, what is your specific background? I know we talked, you and I have talked a lot about nutrition and we talk about cardiology. What is your specific specialty? Well, I originally um, started uh, my medical career as an anesthesiologist. And then very early on in the mid-90s, I got interested in uh, early detection of heart disease. And so I developed centers in various cities that had tests and technologies in the early detection of coronary artery disease and then expanded that to uh, cancer. And, um, and so, um, you know, these centers uh, were in uh, Denver and in Washington, D.C. and other places. And then uh, later on, I uh, became chief medical officer of the largest advanced uh, cholesterol laboratory in the country, uh, and uh, and then since then, I've been very much involved with the field of molecular diagnostics, which uh, in helping to diagnose um, various forms of heart disease. So it's um, uh, but presently I'm a clinical associate professor um, uh, in a um, endocrine uh, at the University of Colorado for endocrinology. And how did Bergamot get on your radar? Well, what happened was. Uh, there's a very good preventive cardiologist, actually he's a radio host in Australia, uh, who um, I've known for many years because we've been involved with the same technologies in the early detection of heart disease. And he alerted me to uh, Bergamet. Uh, he has now 4,000 patients on it. Uh, but he told me about the research. He sent me the research. I was very impressed. And from that, I developed an association with the group of scientists in southern Italy who um, had done most of the seminal research. And uh, since then, I've been to Italy many times and uh, been involved uh, with many of the studies. So um, it's been, really been a very nice adventure, and, and I've been surprised, really, how a fruit grown in one region of the world, uh, if it's extracted and the right um, polyphenols and amino acids are extracted from this fruit, how you can develop a product that can have such wide-ranging benefits. Now, that's I was talking to you yesterday, and, and we were just having a little conversation about the bergamot, and I asked you, what's the one thing that you absolutely love about about Bergamax, about the Bergamot fruit or the product Bergamax. So tell, I thought your answer was very interesting. Why don't you tell, tell our audience well, what you, you told know, I'm me. going to give two answers. I'm going to give the answer I gave you and the answer I thought about that actually turns me on a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> the, 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 as a scientist, I gave you the answer as a scientist physician, which is, you know, which is how can uh, one product... Uh, what, you know, develop so many uh, interesting properties in lowering blood sugar and lowering inflammation and cholesterol and improving vessel health. And, um, uh, you know, you and I talked about how polyphenols might work in, in central processes that can affect so many systems. That's very, very interesting as a scientist. But thinking about it as a consumer or somebody um, who is a physician uh, dealing with problems, there are so many problems that are very difficult to treat and are so common in society. For example, fatty liver disease affecting 20% of Americans. And there's no drug for that. Um, metabolic syndrome affecting 70 million Americans. And there's no single drug for metabolic syndrome. What is meta? Uh, Let me digress just a quick second, Doc. Tell our listeners what is what metabolic syndrome is. Well, metabolic syndrome is a pre-diabetic state that uh, is characterized by an expanding waistline, which many of us have, by um, elevated blood sugar and uh, cholesterol, and um, it's uh, related to lifestyle, uh, eating the wrong foods, uh, especially carbohydrate-rich foods, and sedentary lifestyle, not getting enough exercise. And what happens is you develop 
what's called insulin resistance. Your own insulin doesn't work very well, and I know you've talked about this many times on on your show. And um, through that mechanism, uh, it's a pathway towards diabetes, heart disease, stroke, and many other uh, problems. So, so it's a very prevalent condition, um, and um, most uh, people can just recognize the person walking through the door of an office with a big belly to suspect that this may be going on. Now, continue. I didn't mean to, to uh, no, not digress right. there. Go ahead. Now, how does that relate to Bergamot, Bergamax and Bergamot so, and, and what you like about it? So what's interesting is that, the uh, there, you know, we can address as clinicians the individual aspects of the metabolic syndrome. For high cholesterol, we can give a patient a medication. Um, for high blood pressure, which is a feature, we can uh, treat that with blood pressure pills. For high blood sugar, we can treat it individually. For an expanding waistline, we can't do much other than give the person very good advice on lifestyle. And yet here's one product that addresses all of the components, uh, all five components of the metabolic syndrome and the underlying condition of insulin resistance. Um, And this has been very well studied. I mean, Bergamet was named for the metabolic syndrome, Bergamet. So uh, the fruit is called the bergamot fruit, and uh, but it's been called bergamot mainly because um, it uniquely addresses this very, very important syndrome. It really is considered the epidemic of the 21st century, and it's the pathway by which most Americans are now getting heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. They go through a phase of metabolic syndrome. And how many, roughly how much, what kind of dosage do you need and, and how much time does it take for, you, for people to notice effects, weight loss, changes in blood pressure and blood sugar, et cetera? We, we like to um, have people tr- uh, take it for three months uh, because some of the features like triglycerides uh, will go down very quickly, but some of the features like uh, uh, visceral abdominal fat, uh, waistline size, takes, takes a while. Um, and um, uh, the dose that we use is 1,300 milligrams a day. That's 650 milligram tablets uh, twice a day. Uh, hey, and, doc, um, doc, we got to take a break. I want you okay. to continue when we come back. And then I also want to talk about male sexual performance. There's some interesting stuff that you were telling me yesterday about ED and, uh, and Bergamot. We're talking to Dr. James Ehrlich about Bergamax. If you're interested in purchasing the product, head over to brightsidehealthproducts.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben talking to Dr. Jim Ehrlich about Bergamax. You can find out all about it at brightsidehealthproducts.com. All right, Doc, uh, before we went to break, you were talking about dosages and how soon people can uh, expect to see a, uh, see some benefit. First thing that, you'll, that they'll notice is uh, a reduction in, in blood fats. Is that correct? Yes, they will. And uh, some people get a, a slight reduction in blood pressure uh, early on. Uh, others, it takes a little while. Um, you know, the tri- triglycerides go down first, and then we see if we do advanced cholesterol testing and look at size and density of particles, those improve very quickly, too. The actual cholesterol concentration, which is less important than the particle number, uh, gradually improves, and, and the good cholesterol goes up. So we see those sequences, and we see blood sugar stabilized and and um, and go down in, in many people. So... Um, those are the improvements. Now, technically, the improvements in vessel health uh, occur really within days. Um, so these are things that you won't notice, except for the very interesting phenomenon that many men have noticed an improvement in sexual function, uh, where they say, boy, this is a, you know, I've, I've noticed an improvement here. And we all knew this would make sense, because obviously the blood flow to that organ um, you know, is governed by how much dilatation of arteries, which, which is improved throughout the body, so there's no reason why the penile blood vessels would be spared. And um, so this has been uh, formally studied, and we've been able to look at uh, this area. Now, as I mentioned last time, 
um, the Bergamax improves endothelial function, aligning of all the vessels in the body. This is a lining that comprises a surface area of six tennis courts in the average male and governs uh, how well these vessels respond to stress and, and how well do they dilate. And you want to have healthy linings of the vessels. Um, and the Bergamax very much ensures that. Um, how about so, kidneys? How about for the kidneys? Well, that's right. The kidneys, we haven't studied kidney function um, formally yet, and it's on the agenda. Uh, but there's no question that the kidneys are acutely sensitive to vascular health and dilatation and ability to respond to stress. So um, there's no question that kidneys uh, would be a, a prime beneficiary of, of this kind of uh, supplementation. Um, and certainly the liver, the, uh, you know, the pancreas, and um, the heart are, are very well studied. Um, so we look at this as a cardiometabolic uh, product, uh, helping um, all these systems. And we're also doing some studies on neural protection, on protection of the vessels in the brain and how that might affect, um, you know, uh, brain health. So, so you got a panacea so here. You've got liver. You got well, kidney. Well, it really you got... is. You know, it always seems too good to be true until we talk to some real scientists who say, no, it all makes very much sense because. As you and I have discussed, when you affect some very, very basic cellular processes, then all the uh, organs which are controlled by those processes will, will benefit. So, it, so um, it, it all makes sense. And I think this area of erectile function, we've studied this in concert with arterial stiffness, which is always improved. Um, and... Um, so one way to look at it is we take stiffness out of one area of the arteries and put it somewhere else where people seem to enjoy. So, um, and, you, and you're talking 1,600 milligrams a day, did I hear you say? No, no. Um, it would be 1,300. 1,300. milligram tablets. And it's very important that people take the 38% which you have um, um, concentration. I mean, we do know that there have been other uh, products over the years made from bergamot, usually it's not the Calabrian, but sometimes it is. But these are very weak concentrations. Uh, they, they're never 1,300 milligrams, and they're never 38%. And what we've known for many, many years is that those kind of doses help a minority of patients and, 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 very, and by very modest amounts. So most people don't benefit from the inferior products that they could find. And interestingly, they look like they're cheaper when you go to Amazon and some other places, but they're very small doses and usually two-week supplies and, and, and not very good. So the Bergamax is, is 100, and, excuse me, is, uh, is 60 pills. 45 bucks. Uh, which, is, which is a very, very, and very high concentration and, and the right dose. Uh, so this has been very, very well studied. And all of our science is based on the same 38% and the same number of milligrams that you get in Bergamax. Now, the Bergamax product, that's available on Brightside Health Products. It's uh, brightsidehealthproducts.com. It's $45 for 60 tablets. There's a couple things that you guys are doing differently with uh, the Bergamax. Number one, uh, you mentioned Calabria, right? Uh, yeah, Calabria, that southern Italy uh, area. Well, so what is it about, because bergamot grows in Mexico, too. What is it about the Italian or the uh, Calabrian uh, of bergamot that makes it different? Well, what happens is there's a microenvironment there. This is right across the sea of the Strait of Messina from Sicily. And the particular conditions uh, of the soil and the, and the uh, humidity and others uh, causes the fruit to have a rich content in these polyphenols. Uh, bergamot itself can be grown in Mexico and California, probably even California uh, in Florida. But uh, when the uh, polyphenol content in the pulp is extracted and analyzed, it doesn't have uh, nearly the concentrations that you need uh, of these rich uh, health-producing um, polyphenols and amino acids and other 
other elements that make this very special. So, and, and it's so, also um, the it's all excuse me for interrupting. You, it's also the Calabrian form that's got all the research behind it. Is that correct? Well, that's right. Right. It, you know, ninety percent of the of, of the bergamot in the world is in that area of Italy. So, um, here is a group of research scientists, both in Rome and at the University of Catanzaro, who have the inter interregional center for food safety and health. Uh, and dedicated millions of euros of government money to study this. So it's really the only area, since there are, there are about a thousand growers, it's the only area of the world where they're intensely interested from an economic point of view in, you know, in the benefits of that fruit. It's a big industry for them. And also, you guys are doing something different with it's not the it's not the peel, right? It's the rind, the the white part. It that's really got is the it really is the pulp. And the uh, albedo, which is the is the rind, it's the inner lining uh, that has the high concentration. So the the actual um, peel um, people are familiar with because the oil or essence of bergamot has been developed from the peel, which has been central to the perfume industry and Earl Grey tea, among a few other products. It's a wonderful scent, um, and it's. Um, Really, a, uh, it's really the traditional industry. So it's only been the last several years that the scientists have said, "Well, let's look at the pulp, which is rich in these amino acids and in um, and the uh, polyphenols, and see if there's some health benefits." Noting that people tend to live longer in that region and get less heart disease. Uh, so there was something about this region. Um, and the city, Reggio de Calabria, sometimes called the city of Bergamot. There's actually a museum of Bergamot, uh, called the Bergamotto Museum, and um, uh, it's a very dynamic uh, industry for them, but this scientific effort is relatively new. Now, you can't really do anything with the Bergamot fruit itself, aside from oil, right? It's not very, you can't eat it. Well, it's very tough to eat. No, it's, uh, there's a few old, hardy souls that do eat this, and they tend to live longer. But um, it's, um, you know, there are a lot of supplies, you know, marmalade and soaps that have been made. And, I mean, they've done a fair amount with the, with the peel. And when you go to the museum, I don't think anybody will necessarily make a trip down there. But that museum, there's a shelves and shelves over the last hundred years of various different products, food and otherwise, and perfumes that have been developed. Um, and uh, so the, probably the most recent uh, uh, an innovation has been uh, with these um, uh, bergamot supplements. Doc, we're out of time. I wanted to talk skin stuff. I know you got a, skin, a topical product coming out, and bergamot flavonoids can also be helpful for 